parlays and player props are back. It's week seven. Man, the weeks are flying by. We got four player props plus one sleeper picks entry trying to turn 25 bucks into 250. What's going on? My name's Austin from Calling Our Shot. Let's go 4 0. Let's dominate. You guys in? All right, before we dive into it, I do want to talk about sleeper because they have a free square live right now for all new users. Yes, I said new users. So if you already use sleeper like I do, that's its bummer, but they'll have a bunch of different discounts for Sunday, so you can take advantage of those. But AJ Brown, all he needs is one yard on Sunday night football, that big time game, Dolphins versus Eagles. I'm pretty confident he'll get that. Uh, if you want to use that in your entries, if you are a new user, make sure you sign up using our code COS. So you get a 100% deposit match up to 100 bucks, and you'll also get that free square plus a bunch of other discounts I'm sure they'll put up on Sunday morning. We love Sleeper. We'll talk about them a little bit more later on in this video. But you guys came here for picks. We're going 4 0 in this video. Let's dive into them. If you are new, like I said, my name's Austin. We do a bunch of different videos on the channel. We have my biggest player prop, a one and a half unit play was posted on Friday. Go check out that video. Also, have actually another player props video posted later on today or maybe Sunday morning. We also have our long shot video. We have a ton of different content. Just hit that subscribe button. Ton of content coming your guys' way. Let's dive into the first player prop of the week. One that's going to be very, very chalky, very, very square. And I think you know why. His name's Devontae Adams. Ever heard of him? Over 67 and a half receiving yards, minus 110 on BetMGM. Now, normally I try to avoid the ones that, you know, everyone's going to be on the over because I imagine, you know, 99% of the handle will be on Devontae Adams over. Why? Well, because if you haven't been paying attention to NFL media or, you know, the headlines, Devontae Adams basically came on to paraphrase into a press conference that said, yo, I ain't getting the ball. I need the ball more to impact the game. Yeah, you know, Brian Hoyer, while he will start in place of Jimmy Garoppolo on Sunday, he's not an idiot. He's been around the league plenty of times, and he knows how talented Devontae Adams is. If Devontae Adams says he wants the ball, yeah, I imagine Devontae's going to get the ball, and I think he gets the ball plenty on Sunday in a good matchup for the Bears. Now, you look at this season. Devontae Adams had a pretty good one prior to the last two weeks. Did deal with a little bit of an injury there, but he's at 66, 84, 172, 75, 45, and 29 yards. I mean, the last two weeks, six receptions on nine targets, only 45 and 29 yards to show for it. Just has not been getting targeted a lot. It's not like they're they're not really moving the ball, passing the ball. I mean, Jacoby Myers had pretty good games. I just would be very surprised if Devonta Adams does not get a big workload on Sunday. I think his receptions line sitting around five and a half, maybe six and a half. Look, he's getting the ball on Sunday. Brian Hoyer, shut up. Just just hike the ball and throw it his way. He can do his thing. The Bears secondary, very inexperienced. Really haven't, you know, if you look at the Bears versus the wide receiver, you'd be like, oh, they actually aren't too bad. Well, they also haven't faced a lot of elite competition. They faced the Vikings last week without Justin Jefferson. Then they faced the Commanders, the Broncos, the Chiefs, who don't really have any reliable receivers either. So the only real, you know, number one elite wide receiver I've really seen them face, Mike Evans. They need 171 yards on them in week two. Big time game for Mr. Devontae Adams. We want to bank with him. I'm willing to lose some money on a guy that literally came into a press conference and said, I need the ball more. Yeah, I'm willing to lose a little money there. I don't think we do lose money. I think we make some good money. Devontae, we're rolling with you. My second pick is going to be another wide receiver. Very good in his own regard. Amari Cooper, of the Cleveland Browns, over 62 and a half receiving yards, minus 115 on DraftKings. Personally, I don't see this line changing a ton, but I would play it up to about 65 and a half, depending on what book or daily fantasy app you are on. And if this is, this is a spoiler alert, we do a parlay video where we try to turn $10 into 10 into a thousand just with one NFL parlay. I have been so close the last two weeks. Amar Cooper's in mine for 90 plus receiving yards. So he has my sign of approval to soar over this line. The Colts are a team that is really good against the run. They allow the third fewest yards per carry to running backs. So what do teams do? They say, yeah, we're not running the ball. We'll pass it. And that is why they allow the second most receiving yards to wide receivers at 292 per game. That is a ridiculous number. And that number actually went down from last week because the Jaguars didn't throw for a lot because the Colts offense led by Gardner Minshew was turning the ball over left and right. And the Jags were just being set up on the ball in like the 30 yard. They'd be like, all right, well, we don't need a ton of yards to score here. Look, the Colts have just struggled. They've allowed four, six wide receivers to have 70 or more receiving yards this year. Hit this over. Four of them had 100 plus. Three of them had 140 yards. Yeah, this team is just not playing too well. Amari Cooper should get Deshaun Watson back, which love him or hate him. I think that's a good thing for the passing game. I mean, Dorian Thompson Robinson has not been the answer there. And I just think that this will be a good passing day for them. I think they'll be able to get it going. And I just think this season, we've seen Cooper, the number one wide receiver on this team, six plus targets in all five games. He had 90 plus yards in three of them, 37 and 16 in the other two. PJ Walker, also not the answer at QB. Deshaun Watson has not been great this year. Sure, he's a little banged up. 
just hike it and throw it to Amari Cooper. He'll be open. I really like him to sit in those zone coverages. So, Amari Cooper, we're well with you over 62 and a half receiving yards. Now, my final two plays in this video, we'll be talking about some longest reception props. If you've never bet a longest reception, the bay, great thing about it, only takes one. The guy could suck all game long. Fourth quarter comes around, gets a long reception, boom, he cashes it. I do actually like both these two guys over in receiving yards, but I think the easier way for these two deep threats is the longest reception. Talk about this first one on the Detroit Lions. Josh Reynolds, over 16 and a half yards for his longest reception, minus 114 on Vandal. If the line goes up to 17 and a half, I like it there too. I think Josh Reynolds is a big day. And I like his receiving yards as well. But this line likely of a lot of books are at 17 and a half. It's 18 and a half. Personally, I'd avoid, but 17 and a half, 16 and a half, I'm all in. Now let's talk about Josh Reynolds. If you're a Lions fan, you don't need me to tell you this, but this guy's been quietly very good for him. And you look at his long reception this season, 33, 22, 0, 26, 27, and 21 yards. He did not receive a target or reception in week three. It was a weird week. He just ran a lot of routes, didn't get targeted. Well, Look, I expect that not to happen on Sunday. This is a guy playing in a lot of snaps, and now that they are down, the Detroit Lions are down David Montgomery, Jameer Gibbs, not going to absorb that same workload that David had. Sure, he'll absorb some of it, but this is going to be a Lions team that I anticipate leaning a little bit more on the pass game against a, you know, pretty decent Ravens defense. And Monra St. Brown, Look, the Ravens aren't stupid. They're going to try their best to slow him down. It's hard to do that. He's really good. But, look, Josh Reynolds has been super good, and they need a number two on that side, and this has been a guy that stepped up for him all season long. I just told you his long reception line. This guy playing really well. He's also playing 70% of the snaps, done that in all five of six weeks, including a season high, 81% of snaps last week. His average depth of target is 12 yards. No surprise that when he gets catches, they're normally going for 17 or more yards. That's just what he does. And, look, they target him deep down the field. The Ravens are a team that is, is not a – you know, a bad secondary. This is a very talented secondary, but I'm still confident they can get it done. You look at the Ravens, their quarterback numbers look pretty good against them, but they have not placed, placed an elite number of QBs. Just go look at their game logs. I'll actually be on a quarterback prop for Jared Goff, but I'm going to save that for another video. We'll save that for the video posted after this one. I think Jared Goff has a big day, and I think that includes Josh Reynolds. My fourth and final play in this video, then we'll talk about a sleeper entry. Like I said, another longest reception. It's Gabriel Davis of the Buffalo Bills. Over 18 and a half yards for his longest reception, minus 130 on FanDuel. I personally play this at 19 and a half, and honestly, I don't love laying minus 130 on a long reception prop. I was going to take a 19 and a half line, but the, re the reason I'm taking minus 130 is because all the 19 and a half lines were minus 120. Makes no sense for me to, you know, go up a yard and only get, you know, 10 basis points, if you will. So I think this is the better sign. If you can get a 19 and a half line on Vandal for minus 110, I'd prefer that over laying than a minus 130. But either way, Gabe Davis is in for a big day on Sunday. Let's talk about him because this season we've seen Davis Played pretty well. Long receptions of 26, 40, 34, 35, 29, and only nine yards last week. Three receptions, 21 yards, that long of nine. A weird, 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 weird game for the Buffalo Bills as they almost lost to the New York Giants. Like 16 point favorites. I don't know what the heck was going on in that game, but I think that was just a one game sample size. Everything just went wrong for the Bills offensively. Here they go against the Patriots defense that has absolutely struggled. They're dealing with a lot of injuries. And if Bill Belichick can have his way, he's going to try his best to take away Stephon Diggs. That's a little bit easier said than done. Diggs is still a monster. And even with Diggs having a monster start to the year, we've seen Davis, I mean, David, Gabe Davis. I just combined both his first name and last name, Gavis. He's hit this over in five of six games. This guy is a deep threat for the Bills. And I love getting this number anything below 20 and a half. I will take it every week. Last year versus New England, Gabe Davis had seven and 10 targets. Only resulted in a long reception of eight and 19 yards. So he had tons of opportunities. Didn't really have a ton of catches. I mean, he had like three receptions on each, in each of those games. So three for, on seven targets, three on 10 targets. They're throwing the ball his way. Just couldn't connect on This is a guy in Gabe Davis that goes deep. He's not a guy that's really running a lot of, you know, short three yard routes like Diggs. Diggs runs all that, you know, over the middle type stuff. Gabe Davis is going deep or coming across, you know, deep middle, deep in routes, deep out routes. This is the reason why his average up the target is super long. And this is a banged up Patriot secondary. And I think they're going to have one-on-one -on -one opportunities for Gabe Davis and Josh Allen not afraid of taking them over the last three weeks Patriots have allowed three pass catchers on each team not just in all combined each team has a three pass catchers with a 20 plus yard reception 
if that it continues again on Sunday, Gabe Davis is probably, you know, number two right behind Diggs for getting that 20 plus yard reception. I really like him. He's also a UCF alum. So I have a little bit of a soft spot for Gabe Davis. I will roll with him. I think he has a 20 plus yard reception. If he wants to end on 19, I'd kind of be mad at him because a lot of people will probably take this at 19 and a half, but Gabe Davis, we roll with you. Now let's talk about sleeper and I'll throw up my entry that I'm using on the screen. Like a reminder, they have that free square for AJ Brown all the way up until Sunday night football for him to just get one yard, take advantage of it for all new users and make sure if you can use our code COS where you'll get a hundred percent deposit match up to a hundred bucks. It's also linked in the description. Click it, use it for sleeper. One of the best apps for not only just navigating around super easy to use, but they also do tons and tons of discounts. I bet you they have tons of discounts for the NBA, which starts the back up on Tuesday. But here's what I'm rolling with. Gabe Davis rolling with his higher Josh Reynolds, his higher in receiving yards. We got, obviously, if I had AJ Brown, I would throw him in there as well. But Devontae Adams, Amari Cooper, the four picks I talked about, just taking all the receiving yards. Obviously, we didn't necessarily take the receiving yards for Josh Reynolds and Gabe Davis, but pretty confident they get that if they get their long receiving uh, reception. So four picks, 25 bucks into 250. Boom, that's a winner. Those are my four favorite props of the weekend. I actually have my favorite prop of the weekend is in the video linked. I'll put it right here. Linked in this video at the end of that one it is on a Eagles running back in that Sunday night football game. You can even pair him with AJ Brown free square on sleeper. I'll have our long shot parlay video popping up on the screen. When I record another video with three more NFL props, I'll put that on the screen. I'll say something. The title will be like three more NFL props to lock in for week seven or something like that. Check it out. Appreciate you guys all love and support. Week seven is ours. We're dominating this weekend. Go check out those other videos. Appreciate all the love and support. Let me know your favorite picks in the comments. It's Austin signing out. See you in the next one. Peace.